Automation is probably one of the clunkiest parts of FL Studio, especially if you're brand new to the dog. But it doesn't have to be, y'all. Today I'll be going over the five biggest quality of life tips I can give you that will make automating in FL Studio a breeze. I'm gonna start this off with the thing that annoyed me the most when I was first learning how to automate in FL Studio, and that is how to actually delete your automation clips. For whatever reason, it's actually pretty complicated if you wanna fully delete something you've automated, as just deleting the automation block won't actually regain you control over what you just had automated. So let's say I wanna delete this EQ automation I did. All I have to do is go into the browser on the left side of our screen here, go into current project, then patterns, then initialize control, and here you will see everything that has been automated in your song. I just have to right click on this FabFilter Pro Q1 here and click delete events. Now I have full control of this EQ again without it having to constantly reset back to that first initial automation point I made. You know what you really don't want to be constantly resetting? Your volume faders. Which leads us right into tip number two, don't automate the volume faders on your mixer. Instead, load in Fruity Balance onto your track and automate the volume knob on that instead. You may be asking, why go through the extra step here? Well, like I mentioned in the first tip, once you automate a parameter in FL Studio, it will reset to those same automation points no matter what. Basically making the fader useless and making it a much more complicated process to do small volume adjustments later down the line. By doing it with Fruity Balance, you can still do your volume automation while being able to tweak the volume of your track with the fader later down the line. Automation can really start to clutter up a project, which is why tip number three is a new favorite of mine, and that is doing automation inside of a pattern block instead of doing it on the playlist. Now this really works best if you're automating a bunch of parameters in an 8 to 16 bar section, like for example an EQ. But instead of having 4 to 5 lanes of automation taking up space in the playlist, what I've been doing is creating a pattern block specifically for this automation. The way I've been doing this is to manually record a rough version of the movement I want the EQ to follow with my mouse, and then going back into the pattern block and fine tuning it to my likings. This might not be a useful tip for some people, but for me personally I love it because it compiles all of these little automation clips into one block, leaving my playlist uncluttered, and it also allows me to use the channel racks automation, which I found to be way easier to use for more precise and fine-tuned adjustments. But that last tip is for a very specific case. Most of us will be using the automation clips in our timeline, so I think now is a good time to tell y'all about the wrench tool that has a bunch of extra controls for your automation that you might not know about. All you have to do to access it is to double-click your automation block, and right over here to the right, you'll see this little wrench. It has a bunch of helpful features like this scale level feature, which allows allows you to evenly adjust your volume automation clip upwards or downwards without affecting the curve you've drawn, smooth up which will add extra points to help round out any harsh or sudden transitions, and of course the copy state feature which will allow you to paste the same exact curve you have onto another automation clip. And now for the final tip, I'm going to show y'all how to precisely edit the values of your automation points. This is kind of a big one since typing in values in FL Studio doesn't really work as intended, since for whatever reason it works on values of 0 to 1, 1 being 100% and 0 being 0%, which is great for things like reverbs or delays, but terrible for anything else. Like let's say you're automating this high pass filter here, and it starts all the way down at 250 hertz, but you want it to start at 500. You can try to eyeball it here and get kinda close, but this is super unprecise. Instead, what you can do is find the spot you wanna start at in your plugin like this. For us, we'll just be typing in 500 hertz here, go into the tools function here up top, hover over last tweaked, and click copy value. And now you can paste this value onto the automation point we made to have it be the exact value you want it to be. If some of these tips are a bit more quote unquote advanced for you, and you're looking for some more beginner friendly tips, I have a video that covers my top 10 favorite FL Studio tips that I simply couldn't live without. That's it for this video guys. I hope it was helpful. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see y'all in the next one.